Apple standby mode is the most underrated feature on your iPhone. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to make it really useful, going over the most useful tips, tricks, and hidden features that I can assure you, you didn't know about. Plus some incredible apps that will take your standby experience to the next level. So the first thing that you're gonna want to do is actually turn it on. So let's jump over to your home screen and turn it on inside of settings. If you scroll down just a tiny bit, you're gonna see the standby setting. If you tap on that, that is the most important thing. You're gonna want to, as obvious as it sounds, turn it on. And then the only thing that you'll need is place your iPhone horizontally, usually on a MagSafe charger. And as you can see, it just turned on automatically. And once you do that, you'll be able to choose between the time, photos, or widgets. Before I tell you all of the unlimited ways that you can use Apple standby mode, all of the different widgets, third-party widgets, photos, let's go back to settings for just a second. Because inside of here, we've got a couple different settings that I'm sure you're going to love. So first off, go inside of display and inside of here, you'll be able to turn display on automatically after 20 seconds or never. What this setting will do is it will tell your iPhone if your iPhone is in a dark room, as you can see, if the room is dark and not in use, should it automatically turn off? That's what I have turned on. So when I'm in bed sleeping, I don't have my iPhone on the whole night. If you want to do that, you can simply tap on never and your display will be on the whole night. So it can act like a clock. But here's what I would do instead. I would turn it on automatically and turn on night mode, which one, it will turn on everything in a red tint for low ambient lighting. It should kind of look like this during nighttime. But here's where it gets really useful. Make sure to turn on this motion to wake. What this will do, let's say you've got it in your bed stand and it's nighttime. If you want to activate standby mode, you can simply tap on your table and standby mode will automatically turn on. This setting right here is super cool. Make sure to turn it on. Let's go back for just a second. You can also customize if you want to show notifications inside of standby mode, which I usually have this turned on. And you can also activate show preview on tap only. This setting can be very useful. For example, if you're at work and you've got standby mode over there, let's say someone is sending you a message that is kind of private, maybe it will basically hide the message unless you tap on it. I don't have that turned on because I'm usually at home and anybody can really read my messages. I don't really care. But if you do care, well, you can turn this on. One more very important thing to note, Apple standby mode is only available on iPhone 14 Pro and above. So basically any iPhone model that has the always on display. All right, let's activate standby mode. As you can see, I simply need to turn on my phone just like that and it should automatically automatically turn on. All right, so let's start everything off with clock. So there's a bunch of different styles that you can choose from. You simply swipe up to browse through all the different ones. If you hold in standby mode, you'll be able to customize all of those different styles. As I told you, there's a bunch of different ones. This one is digital. This one is called solar. This one is called analog, world, and float. This one is my personal favorite. I just think it's a lot of fun. If you want to customize a specific style, you simply have to tap on this little circle right here. And some of them let you customize more than others. In this case, this one right here will let you change the different colors. There's a bunch of them to choose from. And here's a tiny hidden trick. If you actually scroll to the end, you'll actually get this multi rainbow one, which is a lot of fun. Check that out. And then once you're done with your style, you can simply tap done. And from there, it will always keep showing you the time. This one right here is quite unique because it lets you know the temperature of your city. It lets you know what day of the week it is and what day of the month it is. And obviously the time. Next up is solar. Solar also lets you customize the color. In this case, it's kind of a gradient mix. So you can actually have two colors at the same time. You've got analog as well, which in my opinion is super classy and I believe you can actually customize the stem right here. Yep, you could customize the little color accent right here to yellow, to pink, to orange, etc. The world style one isn't customizable, but there are some tiny tips that I can tell you. If you tap on these little dots right here, it will let you know the different time zones of the different times that are saved inside of the clock app of your iPhone. So if you want to add a new city to your clock style, that's very easy to do as well. You simply have to go to your clock app, tap on world clock, and from there, tap on this plus icon. And from there, there you go. You can now add whatever city in the world you want. Let's add Cape Town in South Africa, for example. So now I can twist my iPhone again. And there you go. I have now added Cape Town in South Africa. And here's my personal favorite, as I said, the float style. I absolutely love this one. Also, there's a bunch of colors to choose from. And what's fun about them is at the end, you can also divide different colors. You can't choose the specific color. Apple actually did, you know, their own style. So if you want a very specific pink or a very specific green, you're kind of out of luck. Maybe Apple in a future update will add this. But yeah, a bunch of different styles to choose from. These ones are definitely 
so you can see a lot a lot of fun now that we got clock out of the way let's swipe to the left and bring us to our second different modality inside of apple standby mode which is photo now as in clock you can swipe up and have different photo categories starting with featured there is nature there is pets there's also cities there's also people and there is also a custom album. So here's how to customize it. As always, you simply hold on it. You have to put face ID. There you go. If you want to hide a specific category, for example, featured, I don't want, you know, random photos showing up in my standby mode. I can simply tap hide and from there, as you can see, that will be hidden forever. Now, what's specifically cool about these albums is that Apple will actually group all of your pet photos automatically using AI and show them for you. If you want to browse through your photos, you can simply tap on the right side of your screen and it will keep showing you all of the, your different pet photos that you've got in your library. It will show you the time and also the location that you shot that image. And if you tap on that, you can actually tap on view photos and it will jump you straight to that specific photos and your photos. Out. You can also add custom albums to your standby mode, which I highly recommend in order to make it more useful. A cool fact that you probably didn't know about this is your iPhone actually recognizes the location, the specific location of your Max 8 charger. What I mean by this is if you place your iPhone in your bedroom, in your kitchen, and in your studio, your iPhone will remember, your iPhone will remember the specific photos, the specific clock style that you added, maybe even the widgets. And that's why I personally created my own album that always shows in standby mode. I added like 20 to 30 photos that I love seeing daily. And if you want to do that, you can simply tap on the plus icon on the top left and then selecting the album of your choice. Maybe a specific trip like this one, or maybe you can add a specific album of a specific specific person. You can obviously have a bunch of different ones depending on the mood or maybe depending on where you're actually, you know, putting standby mode on. You can have different ones, maybe even one for work, maybe one that is more family focused. You know what I mean. Before I continue, let me ask you a question. What if I told you that the smartest lock in the world doesn't even look like a smart lock? Meet today's sponsor, the Level Lock Pro. Obviously compatible with Apple Home, but most importantly, it's got matter support, which means it's pretty much compatible with any smart home. Its design is absolutely beautiful. It looks like a traditional smart lock, and I say that as a good thing. It's made with extremely premium materials. The installation is extremely easy. No wiring, no drilling. Now, why I love it so much is that it's got Apple Home key, which means you can simply tap the lock with your iPhone or Apple Watch, and it will automatically unlock itself. But beyond that, there are so many ways to unlock it. You can also put the level keypad, and it doesn't even need to be near the lock itself. You can give guests limited codes. You can also obviously use a physical key, NFC key fobs that actually come in the box, or the level app itself. And something else that's new is that you finally now get door status detection, so you can know whether your door is opened or closed. The performance and reliability has also been improved. It runs on the next-gen hardware platform, which is super responsive. Responsive. In terms of security, it's AAA certified. That's pretty much the highest possible rating for security and durability. Level isn't just the standard smart lock. It's truly redefining the smart home. If you want to check out pretty much the best Apple home key smart lock, links are obviously down below in the description. Level, thank you so much for making such a cool product and obviously for sponsoring this video. Now, before we get on to probably the most useful part of standby mode, which is obviously widgets, let me give you a couple tips for standby. Mode. Did you know that you can activate Siri in standby mode? Hey Siri, what's the weather like today? Expect rain today. Daytime temperatures will hover around 82 degrees. Who's playing Barcelona tomorrow? Barcelona is not playing tomorrow. Their next match against Rayo Vallecano is on Sunday at 9. When is Billie Eilish's next concert? And that's where Apple Intelligence comes in, now working with ChatGPT automatically. Is and scheduled for October 9th, 2025 at the Cassia Center in Miami. Okay, Florida. I got it. I got it. The hit that was from Thank you. GPT. Thank you. No oh my gosh. Okay. And that's the true power of standby. You money. can basically ask Siri anything while you are in your kitchen. You can ask for some recipe information at your desk for some work related questions or maybe in your bed stand before you're going to bed and you want to check what's in my calendar tomorrow. Tomorrow you have two events. From noon to 1 p.m. You have Isn't that cool? It's like your personal assistant. There's a lot of instances where standby mode actually becomes interactive. So if I swipe up, as you can see, I've got the dynamic island right on my iPhone, which means it's automatically translated to standby mode. Check this out. If I turn my iPhone to the right, and turn it on. I'll get this little animation right here, which is kind of like the dynamic island of standby mode. If I hold on this, I'll get my new media player inside of standby mode, which allows me to turn up the volume of the song. 
It allows me to skim through the song. It allows me to skip the song as well. And even control playback. All within the player itself, which is just so incredibly beautiful in terms of having it in your desk. It's also very easy to control since the buttons are so big. While you're working at your desk, you can quickly skip a song just like that. And then if you want to go back to the home screen of standby mode, you've also got a little um, line right here, which you simply swipe up. And there you go. Let's add another use case for live activities. We can start a timer just like that. And you'll get the little circle once again. If you hold on that, you'll also get a more beautiful way to browse through your timer, which is the live activity of standby mode. Look how beautiful that is. You can also pause it, play it, or end the timer just like that. Also, if you woke up to an alarm in your bed stand, you'll get this animation right here. I'm sorry for this horrible sound, but I wanted to showcase. Let, let me actually mute it. Okay, there we go. It's a very beautiful and large button layout. Which will obviously alert you of your alarm. You can see the time, what time it is. It will tell you that it's an alarm. You'll be able to snooze or stop it with these big buttons, which makes it just very useful when you're sleeping and you can just tap on it and the buttons are so big, you can just like tap and stop it. Live activities in the Dynamic Island also works for third-party apps such as High Coffee. So now if I turn on standby mode, just like that, I'll tap on my little dynamic island and I'll see a beautiful, beautiful layout of my coffee boost inside of my high coffee app. And if you tap on it, it will obviously redirect you straight to the app itself. An app like Focus to Duo, which also is compatible with the dynamic island, which helps you focus while you're studying, for example. This one, in my opinion, it is also very useful because you can tap on it and while you're working, you're gonna have a very simple, non-distractive little timer for you to focus, for studying, for working, etc. If someone's calling you, just like now, you'll also get an animation which you can clearly pick up the phone call. You can decline, send it to voicemail, or accept. And from there, you've got a bunch of different buttons as well, whether you wanna activate FaceTime, put that person in mute or end the phone call. Or on the top right, you can also decide if you want to put that person on speaker. All right, let's get on to the good stuff now. The most useful part of Apple Standby, which is widgets. You've got two different rows of widgets on the left and on the right. And in order to customize that, you have to select the row that you want first, whether left or right. And once you decide, you simply hold on it tap on the plus and from there you're gonna have a bunch of different widgets to choose from and as you can see there are third-party apps there are first-party apps from apple and even on the top you've got suggestions from apple itself whether you want to add music photos notion pedometer etc you've got two options right here which is widget suggestions so whether you want apple to suggest you different widgets on your own standby mode i honestly turn that off something that i do turn on is smart rotate so depending on the day, whether you are having a calendar event going on or whether you're in your studio and your smart lights want to be turned on in a way. So Apple is recommending them to you, whether you want to turn them on. If you've got an upcoming trip coming up, it will show you. You can also change the order of your widgets by simply holding on a specific widget and pulling it down just like that. If you do decide if you want to remove one, well, it's as simple as tapping on this arrow right here and your calendar, for example, will automatically be deleted. Once you're happy with your widgets, you can tap on done. And there you go. Now, though, let me show you my personal favorite widgets from Apple and third party apps like I was telling you in the beginning of the video. Flighty is honestly one of my personal favorite ones because it lets me know when is my upcoming trips. It basically counted down whether it's a work trip or whether it's a vacation. I always love to see them counting down. It lets me know the day of my trip and my flight info over there. While we're talking about counting down, the kernel widget lets me count down my favorite upcoming films and series. For example, I'm very excited about Avatar, Fire, and Ash, and it lets me know that there's 109 days left for the film. You can also add widgets of your favorite smart home accessories. For example, I've got my softbox, this light right. So if I tap this, this light turns off. If I tap it, the light automatically turns on. There you go. You can add one accessory, two accessories for them. You basically customize it just like this. You simply hold on that accessory, tap over here, and then tap on recommended. And from here, you can add as many widgets as you want. You can add as many smart home accessories as you want. I think the maximum is four, but you can keep adding more and more. So if you place it in your kitchen, a tip that I would give you is add your kitchen light. The way that I do it is as soon as it detects this desk right here, it automatically brings up this light. An obvious one to do is the calendar because it's just such a simple view. It's big, it's clear, it looks good in desk. Another one that I personally love is ChatGBT since it automatically lets me interact with Chat. 
ChatGPT voice mode by simply the standby mode. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? Hey there, I'm doing great and ready to help. If you need me to switch into any particular mode or style, just let me know. Yes, I need you to do one thing. Absolutely, just let me know what that one thing is. And okay, I'll tell you. So you need to tell everybody to subscribe because if they're only finding value out of this very useful standby mode video, if they find it useful and they learned a bunch of stuff, they need to hit subscribe. It's free. You got it. So, hey everyone, if you're enjoying this and you're finding this standby mode video really useful and you're picking up some cool tips, definitely hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it'll help you stay in the loop for more helpful stuff. Thanks for hanging out. You heard it here first. If you're into health, the app pedometer plus plus, will let you know how many steps you took throughout the day. If you've got a robot vacuum, I'm sure you've got a widget. So from here, I can simply tap plus and my robot vacuum will start vacuuming around my house. If you invest in the stock market, you can add the stock widget. You can know how your favorite stocks are doing and some quick news. The music widget is also great since it lets you tap and you know play music directly from there. Very useful. I've also got personally the upcoming days that I'm gonna get water in my house for my shipment. So in six days, I'll get more water for my home. The weather one is obviously great. It lets you know the temperature, upcoming days. I'm so sad that it's raining on Monday. I don't want summer to end, please. If you've got a Tesla, you can set up your Tesla and see all your charging info and all that good stuff. I don't have a Tesla, so I can't do that. But I just want to let you know because you have to do this. The app motivation is also phenomenal because as soon as you put up standby mode, it will give you a very motivational quote. This one sounds very simple, but some of these quotes are actually really, really good. And there's obviously so many more widgets that you could use. Please let me know in the comments what your favorite widgets are for standby mode. Let's all share them down below in the comments. If you found this video useful, hit subscribe. If you want to know how to make the dynamic island or the action button really useful, you can tap on these videos right here and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.